Give him a cigarette. We have Marty. My last one. It's a fucking lie. Why don't you give him a cigarette? Well, look, I'm not playing a charity. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the 73 garage got some cool stuff going on today uh, number one first thing most important is the update on the brake situation I'm gonna get into a whole story about uh, what I did to fix it and how I diagnosed it where I went all that stuff uh, and the second thing we're getting today is my drag racing setup that I run when I'm at the racetrack we'll talk about what I got done to the rear end how it keeps the axle square on the ground and what I use for grip at the track so let's get right to it so as I worked the other day, actually, uh, after I've been having this issue for a while, one of the guys that I work with is actually really into cars. Uh, we got to talking about it, and I kind of told him everything that I've done already. I, I apologize for the, the dryer. I'm trying some clothes up. Um, anyways, I got, I, uh, we started talking about what, uh, I have, what I've already done to the truck for the brake system and what's worked, what hasn't. Well, nothing's really worked, I should say. Uh, but what hasn't worked so far um, is kind of where we were at. So he knew a guy locally in town, and I don't like taking my truck anywhere to anyone to let them work on it. But he goes, no, he's not going to work on it. I'll help you diagnose it uh, to figure out kind of what's going on. So anyways, get the truck over there. This guy does fleet maintenance for a few of the um, FPL, the local FPL uh, agencies. He works on all the big international trucks. Uh, he, was, he used to be a Ford guy back in the day. He's got a 7.3 van himself, actually. Uh, so I took it over there. And the first thing he asked me is about my vacuum pump. And I told him, yeah, vacuum pump's you know, a year, year and a half old. Long story short, we pulled the, the line off the booster and he goes, go ahead and fire the truck up, start the truck. Uh, it's pulling vacuum. And, and again, I have nothing to compare this to about how much it should be pulling, how much it shouldn't be pulling, whatever. He goes over to his truck, his van pulls it off. He goes, pull my, my line off and feel the pressure. The pressure of his vacuum pump would have sucked your skin all right, square off your finger. I mean, it was, uh, the pull was insane how much vacuum that pulled. So um, he's like, it's your vacuum pump. No doubt about it. Um, the symptoms I was telling him, the truck kind of had the same things, driving, going highway speeds, 65, 70 miles an hour. When you'd step on the brakes, it would grab pretty well, but if you grabbed them again, it ended up not stopping as well. So long story short, orders me a pump, it's a Motorcraft pump. Uh, it was about $190, kind of had to eat the cost of it, but he was very confident that was gonna be the, the issue, the fix for it, and sure enough, it was. Put the new pump on when I got home, it took me about 20 minutes to change it out, and that ended up being my issue. So. Uh, big shout out to Tony over at Stam Enterprises uh, doing fleet maintenance stuff. I really appreciate the help. Uh, you got the truck. I mean, this truck has never stopped like this ever. So uh, Tony really helped me out, his knowledge and everything. So uh, commend him on that. But uh, that was my issue. So long story short, if you need a replacement part, whether it's an engine component or anything else that you can, just buy Motorcraft. I know it's, it sucks, you kind of got to pay for it, but if you know someone that's a dealer, you could get a little bit cheaper through. It definitely is worth the money. I should have did this a year ago or a year and a half ago whenever I had the old pump. I think I paid 80 bucks. It was an AC Delco pump that I got off of Rock Auto and it was garbage. Ended up not working that well, obviously, uh, hence the issues. So all the new booster and all the new things that I've done to it since when I was having the issue, ended up solving the problem and have actually made the braking a lot better. So uh, the truck is amazing, stops awesome. So uh, the next thing I want to get on is possibly going to the racetrack Friday with Vinny to go see what the trucks can do now. So moving on to the next uh, subject here, I get to go to the racetrack on Friday. Uh, it's been over six months as I've been out there racing. I had issues with the truck at the racetrack uh, when I was back there in August. Um, and I've had other things occupying my time in between, so I haven't been able to get out there. But since I got the braking issue fixed, I'm gonna get a, go ahead and talk about, um, in just a couple minutes here, about uh, my issues that I've had at the racetrack, what I've done to fix them, and what I'm looking forward to. So one of my biggest problems, uh, every time I go to the racetrack, the truck with the braking issue again, I cannot hold it when I'm staging the truck. Double bulb it, as soon as I start to build uh, my boost pressure up, the truck, the brakes literally cannot hold the truck. I push through the brakes and either I deep stage or I end up red lighting. Um, and that kind of messes up, obviously the time, 60 foot, everything like that, the total elapsed time I should say. Uh, and it really hurts my, my quarter mile performance. So I'm, I'm eager to get out there and see if I can get the truck to hold. Uh, if I can leave like 10, 15 pounds of boost, I'm hoping for a, a 
like a 1.5, 1.6, 60 foot if I could, and I'm hoping for a low 12, maybe the high 11 second pass. We'll have to see how the truck runs uh, on the single pump, single high pressure oil pump that is. Uh, so we'll see what happens, but my goal is to get out there on Friday with Vinny. He said he's down to go, so that'll be a lot of fun. We'll go race some hell out the racetrack and uh, see what the trucks can do now. Uh, hopefully the weather, again, holds out for us. South Florida, you never know what's going to happen. It could be raining in your backyard and sunny in the front, so <laughs> uh, you never know what's going to happen. So hopefully if I get out there on Friday, I will definitely be making another video uh, out there at the racetrack, and I'll hopefully get some good footage of us racing out there. So I started really getting serious into racing my truck, I'd say probably about a year and a half ago. Uh, I just took it out there. Uh, for, I believe it was a street racing made safe event. They do those locally. I don't know if anybody else has ever heard of it, but street racing made safe is a, is a great, um, it's a great event. They get out there and try to get people off the street from street racing. I want to see what the truck could do. Had a lot of issues with traction, had a lot of issues with not being able to burn out on a street tire. Uh, so I started looking to, uh, some other more senior than me, seven, three guys and guys that drag race and, uh, started talking to them about it and, uh, kind of asked them what their setup was, what kind of tires they used, how they were able to launch the truck, things like that. Um, kind of a learning process for me. I've, uh, I've always been into drag racing. Drag racing has been in my family, uh, my dad's side, my mom's side. So it's uh, something that I love doing. Um, and I really wanted to get out there and, um, see what the truck could do. So again, asked around with a lot of guys on the internet and guys that I know personally about what their setup was for drag racing and how they get the truck to hook up, things like that. So after I put the bigger set of fuel injectors in the truck, I went ahead and bought a set of slicks for it. So I got with Brian over at uh, Jelly Boat Performance, got to talking about slicks, and he's been racing for a number of years as well. So Brian recommended the MH Racemaster Cheater Slick. It's a 30 by 14 slick, and uh, he just recommended getting any 16 by 12 uh, steel wheel just to mount the, uh, the slick on. So I ended up buying a Proline wheel uh, from Summit Racing. I got the tires and the wheels from Proline Racing. It was like 700 bucks roughly uh, for the two rear slicks with the wheels. Uh, I ended up making it out to the racetrack. Uh, this is when I had my smaller fuel injectors. I was only running a 160, 100%. It did awesome. Uh, the feeling of a, of a turbo diesel truck, I mean, mine isn't the fastest around, but the feeling of a turbo diesel truck, or, or any vehicle for that matter, on a slick as opposed to a street tire, is night and day difference. You just, there, there's no comparison. Uh, so the truck hooked up, but I was having issues with traction uh, due to the fact I still had the 410 rearing gears and an open differential, factory open differential. So you could do a burnout and the whole thing, you get the one tire would spin and the other one would still stay wet. So you go to launch it, the truck would end up spinning off the line. Uh, so I got with my buddy, Dan Clunk. Uh, he's on Instagram. Dan's been racing for a number of years. He runs a white uh, OBS 7.3. Uh, it's like 700 horsepower on fuel. Uh, and we uh, kind of shot the shit about it. And he pointed me in the right direction of changing from a 410 to a 355 for better top end, uh, things like that, better mid-range power. And I also went with a uh, mechanical locker, uh, a mechanical grizzly locker from Yukon Gear and Axle, and the ring and pinion, the 355 ratio is also uh, from uh, Yukon Gear and Axle. So I went in there, or I had to actually took it to a shop up in Delray Beach, local to me, had them switch this stuff out. That's one thing I've, I've never done before, and I didn't want to just experiment and, and, and completely destroy, you know, a thousand plus part, a thousand dollars worth of parts in the rear end, just because I said I wanted to do it myself. So before I start delving into rear end stuff of my own, I'd like to do it. <laughs> once with someone who knows what they're doing before I do something like that. So I took the truck out to the racetrack uh, for the first time with the new stuff uh, about a year ago, uh, probably about around this time last year. Uh, it, was, it was really cool out that night, still on a single high pressure oil pump, 300, 200s, all the new stuff in the rear end with the slicks and the truck did a 1287 uh, at 107 miles an hour. Uh, that was the first pass that I did uh, with that setup and the truck ran awesome and hooked up great, good burnout. These, these, these slicks, I'll show you in a second, they really hook up well. I've never, ever had a traction issue with them. You do a good, a good, um, a, a pretty good burnout to heat the tires up and they hook up every time. Uh, so I'm hoping with, you know, combined with the new braking stuff and all the, all the stuff in the rear end that I can get the truck to hold and I can leave out of the hole with some boost and hopefully either, I'm hoping for a low 12, maybe a high 11 second pass. A lot of people have confidence that it'll do a high 11. I'm not so confident. I'm thinking maybe a low 12. Uh, I'd be super happy with that even. But if it does 11s or high 11 second pass, I'd be really, really happy to have a, a full body truck do it. I mean, it's got both tanks, a spare tire. Uh, there's no weight reduction in it whatsoever. The truck weighs about 6,300 pounds with me in it. So we'll see what happens. All right, so we're gonna get into uh, basically the specs and stuff of what's on here. I know I kind of went over it a little bit before, but um, I'll talk about the tire setup, the wheel, uh, show you some different angles so you can see how everything looks. Um, a lot of this stuff I've learned from other guys who are drag racers, way more experienced 7.3 guys than myself. Uh, and I really appreciate all the input that everyone's given me. 
uh, over the past couple of years for all this stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here are the slicks. These are a 30 by 14 Race Master Cheater Slick, like I said. Uh, these things are awesome. I run them right around 20 PSI. Uh, again, I've never ever had a traction issue with these things. The truck hooks up very well and holds all the torque, doesn't spin, uh, everything that you could possibly want when you're drag racing. Uh, they do a pretty good burnout. Uh, they, get, they get heated up pretty quick. They're pretty sticky once they're warm and ready to go. Uh, so again, these tires are a MH Race Master 30 by 14 is the measurement. I believe these are a Proline, just a steel Proline 16 by 12 wheel that I, um, I bought to mount the tires on. Uh, so it hooks up pretty well. I had a buddy of mine uh, that works at a local shop. He threw them on for free, which was awesome. Um, again, I'm very new to the drag racing world. I wasn't sure. I've read online some guys are talking about bead locking, and bead locking is essentially uh, fastening a almost a ring on the outside that basically bolts the wheel to the slick. So if you have too much tire spin or the wheel spins faster, you can actually spin the wheel inside of the tire, which is a thing. Uh, if anyone has never heard of that before, it's something with drag racing, but I've heard I'd be okay with this so far. So I've had no issues uh, as of right now. Uh, what else we got here? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, oh, also with balancing. Um, I guess you don't have to balance slicks. From what I've read online, you really don't have to. Um, I've never balanced mine and I've gone over 100 miles an hour with these slicks, never had an issue. They definitely shake at the top end, but I think that's just because from the truck's weight, if anyone else has any other input, um, feel free to drop it. I'm always, or talk about it in the comments, I'm always uh, eager to learn new things, uh, especially when it comes to drag racing, so. Um, but other than that, the slicks do pretty well for themselves, and I've never had an issue, like I said, with traction. Right, so the next component here that really helps uh, when you're thinking about drag racing is traction bars. Uh, they're not just there for looks, they actually help prevent axle wrap. Uh, these bars, let me get this light here, right? Uh, these bars are actually from uh, a guy that I'm friends with on Instagram. His name's Chase Greer. The company is called Greer Fabrication. Uh, these are his standard six foot track bars. Uh, they are a weld on set. I had a, a friend up in West Palm Beach weld these on for me. Uh, they work awesome. I had a lot of axle wrap after I rebuilt the motor. Uh, and the motor was, was still healthy and fresh, but uh, that was a couple years ago. But I had a lot of issue with tire hop and, and axle wrap. Uh, for those of you that don't know, axle wrap is basically when the rear axle, uh, kind of use my hand here for a second. Uh, basically what happens is that when the axle is sitting still and you apply torque uh, to the rear end, the axle will actually walk back and forth kind of like a fishtail. Um, and these actually are welded onto the frame and welded onto the actual, the actual rear end itself uh, that hold the rear axle stable and keep it from walking or wrapping, if you will. Um, but these are awesome. Huge component when it comes to drag racing, especially if you're gonna be running a slick at the racetrack. Uh, my truck's two wheel drive, so it really helps with um, keeping the wheels tight and square uh, when you're leaving out of the hole. So uh, shout out to Chase Greer. Never had an issue with them. They're nice, uh, real nice addition to the truck and they help me out. All right, so the final piece of the puzzle uh, that has really pushed me in the right direction was all the advice that Dan Clunk gave me about having the, the different gear ratio and having a locker in the rear end. His rear end's welded. Um, that's the easier way to do it. If you have a welder, you know someone that can weld, uh, you can weld uh, the differential and it kind of locks it, acts as a locker, if you will. Uh, but I went ahead and bought um, all my stuff from Yukon Gear and Axle. Awesome company, awesome products, never had an issue. Uh, but I bought the Grizzly uh, Mechanical rear end or uh, rear end locker slash differential. And I also went with their uh, 355 ratio ring and pinion set for better top end, better mid range power, things like that. Uh, I had four tens in the truck and it was snappy out of the hole, but I was really, I was really, really running out of top end mile an hour and RPM. So the 355s really helped. Um, I, you know, at the racetrack with trap speed, things like that. Uh, the, the biggest thing was the mechanical locker. Uh, I don't ever have to worry about one tire spinning ever again. Both tires always spin. Both tires are going to lock up when I leave um, the lights at the track out of the hole. So uh, that was the ultimate goal of everything, and it's all worked out for me. So uh, pretty eager to get back to the racetrack Friday. Again, hopefully the weather holds out for me and Vinny. We can go out there and um, try and uh, see what our trucks will do. So... Uh, we'll see what happens. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. If you guys got any questions about anything that we've discussed today, uh, if you have any tips or tricks for me for drag racing, please let me know. Uh, always eager to hear them. Uh, also, if I get out to the track Friday, I will be posting a video probably Saturday. Um, we'll see how we'll see how everything goes. Weather holds out for us. I will definitely do a video with uh, me and Vinny running at the racetrack. Hopefully it happens. That'd be a lot of fun. Also want to thank everybody for the support over the past, I guess, month or so. 
I have almost at a thousand subscribers and the page is basically like a month and a half old. It's only in its infancy. So uh, please keep it up. Uh, I'm here to help. Love doing it. So if you have any more suggestions, any things you'd like me to talk about, topics, things like that, please, please send them over to me. Thanks for watching again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the page with your friends. Check out my Instagram. I post it at the end of the video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon's got him. Brandon got him. Brandon got him. Brandon got him.